Hello students, so welcome to the series of Pravega YouTube channel based on wonderful book David J. Griffith. So students, in last talk, I told you about the cylindrical coordinate system. So this time, <clears throat> I am going to talk about the spherical polar coordinate system. So this will be the part of vector calculus. And you know that Coordinate systems play a vital role when we study all type of physics, quantum mechanics, classical mechanics, electromagnetic theory, everywhere these coordinate systems, they play a very important role. So in that sequence, today I am going to discuss this spherical polar coordinate system. So students, if you have a point P located in the space, you can represent it by a spherical polar coordinate system. So suppose this is your x, y and z. Uh, <clears throat> x, y, z axis. And then this is the point P. Okay. So now just draw a perpendicular on the x, y plane like this. This is the perpendicular. So just let me... Uh, change the color. So this is the perpendicular that is dropped and then just put the perpendicular on x-axis and perpendicular on y-axis. Okay. So this distance along the x-axis will become x. This distance along the y-axis will become y and the perpendicular distance will become z that you already know in Cartesian coordinate system. So now here just see what will happen. Uh, just directly connect this point to what is called position vector that will be R with Z axis. The angle made is theta. And when you put this on X, Y plane, this vector we generally represented by rho. This is from the cylindrical coordinate system. If you remember, the rho was there. So this is your rho. So we have r theta and the angle made with x axis and this rho vector is called pi. So your x, y, z is converted to r theta and pi. Now like we represented in the previous case, we represented this by three perpendicular surfaces. So in this case, what will be the three perpendicular surface passing through the point P? So one will be the cone, the conical surface, which you can see, you can make it like this here and you can connect it. If I take the annotation again, uh, this, this will be that cone, which you can see here. Okay. So, uh, This is that cone which is going on from this passing through the point P. And there will be a plane which will be passing through this. Directly you can make this plane, connect it here. Again I will take the annotation. So just connect it with that point and this plane, this plane, you can see it here. This plane is, this plane is the plane phi is equal to constant because this plane is at constant angle phi. And the third one is the spherical surface with a constant radius. So all these three surfaces intersect at point P. So you remember what happened in rectangular coordinate system, three planes intersected. What happened in cylindrical coordinate system, three plane intersected and the same thing is happening here, uh, three planes getting intersected in a spherical polar coordinate system too. Okay, so let us now uh, go into the little detail. If I take a small element, so you can see here, if I take this small element, this small element is actually representing the small volume 
and uh, we can write the complete thing about this uh, because we already know so let me just show you suppose this is angle phi so this one is this is rho so this is obviously a rho and this is phi this is rho d phi small angle correct so this uh, point is r so what is rho this is theta so what will be rho this this rho will be z will be r cos theta and rho will be r sin theta so your rho will become r sin theta okay so what will be this this will be r sin theta d phi because rho is r sin theta and the same thing will be carried out here this distance is equal to this distance correct now what about this this here what is happening that is small displacement is in theta direction so this will be d theta and again uh, r d theta because arc is equal to radius into small angle so r d theta so this area small area on the surface will become product of this and this r square sin theta d theta d phi and this depth is dr so if you want to calculate the volume it will become r square sin theta d theta d phi dr this area you can calculate by length into breadth this area you can calculate by length into breadth this area you can calculate by length into breadth so just go into the detail of this figure then you will understand everything correct now uh, the unit vectors which are very important even in this exam uh, csi net exam something related to unit vector was asked so unit vector is in the direction of increasing in that vector for example r increases in this direction so this is r cap phi increases in this direction this is phi cap theta increases in this direction so this becomes theta cap so these are the direction in which that particular vector increases fastest so that becomes the unit vector and now you can see x can be written as r sin theta cos phi y can be written as r sin theta sin phi and z can be written as r cos theta and all these things can be written in a very simple geometric manner correct now very very important just go through with these coordinate systems so that while doing the problems you are very comfortable now this table which can be easily derived from your knowledge of coordinates so this is r cap theta cap pi cap this is x cap y cap z cap and because you have relations uh, for example x is equal to r sin theta cos phi so if i want to calculate the unit vector uh, in respective direction i can calculate this for example if i calculate it in r direction i will take derivative del x by del r and dividing by its modulus so when i take the derivative it will become sin theta cos cos phi so you can see here sin theta cos phi now calculate uh, in the direction of it is it was in the direction of r then calculate x in the direction of theta so differentiate it with respect to theta sin theta will become cos theta cos phi will be cos phi and because of the magnitude r will be gone correct and similarly when you calculate it with respect to phi differentiate it with respect to phi so it will become cos phi will become minus sin phi and uh, uh, divided by the magnitude so magnitude will be that rho vector so r sin theta will be gone so similarly you can fill the whole table uh, by doing though by doing this okay a y a z all can be calculated so once you know these interconversions you can easily handle the coordinate system but one thing i must tell even after knowing the basics it is very important to apply it in particular problems without application in different problems you will not have a feeling of 
coordinate systems okay thank you so in next uh, uh, video i will start doing some very good problems from griffith and that can be according to your demand also if you put it in the comments thank you